here is the strange thing. Why are so many commentators so desperate to see racists everywhere, yet so blind to the ones right under their nose? Right now, a whole heap of media commentators are damning thousands and thousands of Australians as racists for their treatment of Adam Goods, the former AFL superstar and Sydney Swans captain who identifies as Aboriginal. Now, this tirade comes after Channel 10 last week screened a film about Goods and the booing he got from fans at the end of his career, treatment that the AFL now says was racist and is apologised for. Here's the promo for that film, The Final Quarter. I've never seen a country so divided about a sporting subject like this. What he's doing is cutting through. He's forcing our nation to talk. It's not a comfortable thing to talk about. It's definitely not a comfortable thing to go through. I decided to stand up. Now, since that film was shown, we've been reading one commentator after another, particularly on the ABC, agreeing that Indeed, Goods was the victim of racism by huge numbers of Australians and also from some in the media like me who did oppose the, bully, the booing but did criticise Goods. Really important sections of it were running highly um, distorted um, images and creating a fictional character effectively that they could then vilify that swept up a, a popular movement. Now... This groupthink on the media on this one is uh, an astonishing rewriting of reality. This is the media left inventing wicked media personalities, twisting the facts to whip up stands packed with Australians who are racists and booing. We settle down because here are the facts. Goods was not booed because... Australia suddenly had an attack of mass racism. He was booed only when three things happened, one after the other. First, Goods helped to humiliate a 13-year-old girl at the football who rudely called the, this tall and bearded player an ape. Goods pointed her out and security marched that girl out of the stadium where she was detained and questioned by police and named and shamed in the media around the country as a racist. Racism has a face last night and, you know, it was a 13-year-old girl. In my opinion, a girl that young, 13, should have been protected, not absolutely trashed on national television by people dancing all over her as they played their race politics. And I include many in the media, and that's shame on you. Second thing, goods... As he got older and a bit slower, started to stage for freeze and lay bumps which rival fans thought were dirty. And he seemed to threaten Carlton fans with a race-based war dance, waving an imaginary spear. That, I said, was provocative. And those three things together, well, no wonder Goods was booed. I hated that booing. I said it was bullying, but it wasn't racist. In fact, the commentators who insisted it was racist have got to explain why Goods, alone of the only one among 70-odd Aboriginal players, got booed like that. Why no African players get booed like that? And then Goods, why wasn't he booed in the dozen years before he singled out that girl? So I think... I think the commentators are using the racism excuse to avoid criticising Goods and his left-wing preaching of divisive race politics. That most Australians don't like. Or maybe they just attack Australians as racist to make themselves look more moral or maybe to keep sweet with the AFL, access, all that kind of stuff. But I said that these people, these media types, were inventing racists on the one hand yet ignoring real racists on the other. About which, one of the bravest women I know is Jacinta Price, who identifies as both white through her father and Aboriginal through her mother, former politician Bess Price. Now, Jacinta Price has been an Alice Springs town councillor and stood for the country Liberal Party at the last federal election, just came up short. She's also attacked 
identity politics and the politics of racial division. She wants people, including Aborigines, to take more responsibility from themselves, not always blame someone else. And she's about to start her Mind the Gap lecture tour, uh, explaining what she thinks really does need to be done to fix the real problems in so many Aboriginal communities. So, you want to see a real victim of racism? I've mentioned before the horrible, racist filth thrown at Jacinta Price, and often by Aboriginal activists, thrown at her for being a conservative Aboriginal woman. As I said, I've said it before, but what she's been getting on the Facebook page that announces this new tour of hers has been truly shocking. Another level again of depravity. Again, she's abused as a coconut, white on the inside. And she's a race traitor, they say, a racist to her own race. She's a dog and a sellout, as if all Aborigines do and must think the same. And then there are the threats, not just to throw eggs at her or to hit her head with a brick, but actual tweets from one Aboriginal man in particular boasting he'd need just one headshot or to take out one of Price's vital organs. Now, this is not the first time that Jacinta Price has been bombarded with racist abuse and threats, often from Aboriginal activists, but each time this happens, I see virtually zero interest from the media left. Almost no reports of it. No condemnation. No, let's ride with Jacinta. Here is real racism aimed at an Aboriginal woman, a conservative, and the media virtually silent. On the left, they are much more interested, much more interested in inventing fake racists to defend an Aboriginal man of the left.